Genso here. This is my Devil May Cry 5 Dante Must Die difficulty S rank walkthrough. This is mission 19. It is entitled Virgil, and it's a boss fight against Virgil with Dante. So if you played Devil May Cry 3, um, this encounter is going to be pretty familiar to you. Virgil's going to do a lot of the moves that he did in those encounters in that game. And the difference mostly being that you have access to all of the styles, and a lot of the styles have received quite a bit of an upgrade since that <laughs> since that game came out. So um, you shouldn't have too much trouble in this first phase. Virgil's going to be mostly pretty passive. It's going to be a good opportunity to start building up some SDT by royal guarding some of these swords and some of his combos, which are admittedly pretty easy to, to block. Um, just make sure you know when you're when you're practicing this and when you're trying to learn it that the best thing to do is always to block early than to block late because if you block early you're just going to get the regular um, guard it's going to cost a little bit of your devil trigger gauge but you're not going to take any damage from it it's not going to drop your combo if you if you block late you're going to take massive damage and Virgil's going to have potential to kind of juggle you so try to avoid that if you can but if you're royal guarding the summon swords which isn't too hard and you're royal guarding those um, single judgment cuts that he does, which aren't very difficult either. You can really get the STT gauge up really quickly, and you can really get to triple S very easily. But um, we're coming up on the second phase, and um, you really want to try to have a full royal gauge when you do this. You really want to hit him with a devil triggered release right here, which I missed because I knocked him away, which is unfortunate. But when Dante says, I think it's just about time to settle this, that's going to be your cue that second phase is going to begin. And Virgil's always going to teleport away, and he's always going to go into his SDT state. And um, he has tremendous hyper armor while this is going on, and it, it, it can seem pretty daunting and pretty difficult to get him out of it, but... I found that the best way to do that is going to be to um, wait for him to utilize that that flying move that he does, that really fancy move where he flies around the the outskirts of the arena, and actually hit him with a royal release on that. And that that can sound pretty scary, but um, guys, I I only practiced this fight for about two hours, and I was able to get it done. So it. You know, it's not too difficult. It's not the flashiest fight. And, you know, if I spent days practicing him like some of the other players have done, I could probably do some of those fancy things too that they do where they royal guard everything that he does immaculately. But um, I just don't expect most people to be able to do that or that most people even want to, to put in that kind of time. So um, I'm mostly just going to be showing you the strategy that's going to get this done. And this is it right here. If you if you do your EX provocation, it'll hold your, hold your rank right there. But you saw it there. Um, when he comes in, just do a jump and do a royal release into him. And if you're anywhere near the hitbox for that attack, it's going to give you the royal release. And you're going to instantly knock him out of SDT, and you're going to have a chance to do some do some attacks on him. But I find this transitionary period here, this I'll call this like phase 2.5 kind of, <laughs> where it's a little bit prior to phase 3, but you've not quite done enough damage for that. He can... He can go back into SDT and things can get a little hairy here, um, just trying to do this little bit of damage, but that downward, that kind of helm breaker move that he does is extremely easy to do a royal release on if you just jump first and, and hit the royal release. If you're if you're kind of close to the ground when you royal release, you should still be in his hitbox. If you jump too high, you'll probably get the royal release, but you won't hit him with it, which is unfortunate. Anytime Virgil puts summon swords around you, you can either um, use the style button on Devil Sword Dante to activate your own summon swords to knock those away, or you can just switch to Balrog and do a jump. If you switch to Balrog and do a jump, it will break his summon swords every time, but you definitely want to break those anytime his summon swords are around you. But I, I get a pretty good juggle on him right there um, with the summon swords, which actually do a pretty good job of, of juggling him. And the best way to deal damage to Virgil, it's not very stylish or very cool, but is to do Devil Triggered Stingers. And uh, you saw there just how much life that depleted. And um, Dante will make a comment when you get to about 33% of his life. Um, he'll say something about, um, you cut off your own son's arm for this, and that's your cue that third phase has started. So um, when you get him to, I want to say about 10%, 10 to 15% of his life, you can go ahead and activate SDT, and I'll tell you from experience, 
it, it seems a little counterintuitive, but you want to activate SDT when Virgil's right next to you because the AoE will knock him back and he'll teleport away. If you wait until Virgil's away from you to activate the SDT, he'll teleport into you and he can maybe hit you and ruin your no damage. So do that. Um, activate the Lucy move. Do as much damage as you can and then go into the Ender and that should finish him off. But um, that's really the... Um, the crux of, of this these last two missions the last mission is mostly just going to be a chance to to really style on Virgil and put it on him good but thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time